Welcome to Have a Bible Question Live, where you'll receive a Bible answer to your Bible question. And now, let's study the Bible. All right, I did have a question that came in uh, last week that was asked to me. And, and, and Troy, it's a question we've a- answered a few different times on the program. And uh, I, I imagine we're going to be hearing this over and over again, and that's okay, you know, because we have the one book, the same gospel we preach and teach, but uh, sometimes people either come at it from a different um, angle at us or they, they don't have the other answer that we we gave to them. And so I, I wanted to answer, start off this week with this as far as answering the question, what is the new Jerusalem and uh, that it talks about and the new heaven, new earth concept uh what does that mean? And I know you've recently taught it. So if you're going to answer well, that. I am teaching it. <laughs> well, yeah, you're teaching it right now. So if, if, if you wanted to explain that to somebody that just walks up to you and says, what's the new Jerusalem? What's the new heaven? What's the new earth? Okay. How would you explain it? Well, it's a phrase that comes out of the book of Revelation. Uh, it's in chapter uh, 20, uh, begins in chapter 21, really 20, but 21, it says, and I'll just read it. Uh, 21 verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And so the first thing that I would say to somebody who wanted to know what that is, is I would say, well, it's a poetic or a a vision way of vision way, a uh, Figurative. Well, figurative. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. A figurative way of talking about heaven. Uh, so whenever it says a new Jerusalem, you, you need to read the whole context of Revelation to see what's going on. This is the end. This is when uh, the saints, the saved and the martyrs and everybody are going to be brought into heaven and John seeing a vision of after judgment. And so what we see here in chapter 21 is judgment has happened. And this is the reward that we're all going to be given. It goes on to describe this new Jerusalem. And this is what a lot of people already know is that's where the phrase streets of gold come from and the pearly gates and things like that. It's all right here in revelation. And what it is, I want this way. I try to explain it. Imagine that you saw something, you saw it and nobody else did. It was so incredible that you go back and you're trying to explain it to somebody, but you don't know how to explain it. So what you do is you start saying, well, it it was kind of like, it was clear, kind of like this, and and, and it had this kind of color, and it was shaped kind of like this, and you start using objects to say this is what it was like. That's what the entire book of Revelation is, and especially in this part right here, it's figurative language. It's, It's so beautiful. How can I describe it? Well, it was like streets of gold. It was like gates made of pearl and things like that. Also, this is an appeal back to the Old Testament because Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 65, he also uses that phrase, a new heaven and a new earth. And there he's talking about the coming kingdom, the kingdom we're in now, the Christian age. Exactly. So whenever John's using that, and that's all through the book of Revelation, he he uses Old Testament uh, figurative language like that to bring into the Revelation. So now he's using that same language to say it is, it's a kingdom. It's the heavenly kingdom. It's heaven where we're going to be. So all that being said, it's figurative language for our future abode as the saved, as the saints in Christ. Is it a physical place? Well, we don't actually know that. Uh, It says, for example, there is the the first heavens and earth passed away. There was no more sea. So that means that it's not going to look like this earth that we're on now. If it is this earth, it ain't going to look like it because there won't be any sea. Uh, In chapter 20, verse 11, it says the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no more place for them. Second Peter talks about how the earth, you got that? Yeah, right here. Read it. Uh, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, which wherein dwelleth righteousness. But before that, 
he talked about the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night and in which the heaven shall pass away with the great noise. The element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. Uh, seeing then that these things shall be absolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with fervent heat. And then he says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, which wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right. So right. the answer so, to the question is what is a new heavens and new right. earth? It is our future abode. Mm hmm. It is the place that Jesus, for example, in John chapter 14 talked about he's going to prepare for us. There he called it a mansion. So what is it? Is it a mansion or is it a place with many rooms or is it this holy city or is it a new heaven and new earth? Well, it's all of those. Have you ever thought about the idea of the preparation in what you were saying there? I go to prepare a place for you. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, you know, this whole earth here was created mm -hmm. uh, in six days with him speaking into existence. Mm -hmm. And there was seventh day God resting. Now, by the way, could he have done that all in one day if he wanted to? Of course, he's almighty. Yeah, but he had wisdom in what he was doing, and I might not always understand it. Don't have to understand it. it. When he says he goes to prepare a place for you, is it because it's taking thousands of years for him to get it in order? No. So we understand that to be what? Uh, accommodative language yeah you know it, a figurative accommodative it's it's saying i'm going and, and it's to provide hope yeah. yeah it's to give us hope and the preparing is actually i think the long suffering of god to mm. allow for people to come to obedience and the mm. spread of the gospel yeah. and he's giving that time until as first corinthians 15 talks about that he is going to put all enemies under the feet deliver yeah. up the kingdom to god and and then it's done. And right. so that preparing is giving time for his, uh, the eternal plan to mm -hmm. play out. Yes. And so when he yeah. says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place, it's literal in the sense that he's going and he's, he's coming, but the preparing the place in the mansions, it's that accommodative language like you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I don't understand why we can't understand that in John uh, 14, but we can't understand that in the book of Revelation. Exactly. Right. You're not being consistent. And this is the whole point. It's like it's our future abode, and it is what God's going to prepare. We Here's the bottom line. Nobody knows what it's going to be like. John, the apostle, has given us a glimpse and used figurative language, accommodative language, to try to help us understand what it's going to be like. But we don't actually know. So for somebody to say, oh, it's going to be this or it's going to be that, well, you're being, uh, you're just, it's conjecture. Right. That's all it is. It's conjecture. Well, and never, never messes, uh, fails when we say something like that. Somebody say, oh, but it says over here, this, and it says over here, this. Yes. But again, that's your comparisons that we have. Yes. Right. To try and help a finite mind to understand an infinite, infinite. God. Yes. And Wayne, would it be like the garden of Eden? Well, uh, in Genesis chapter three, verse nine, uh, it says the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? And what that means is that there was this personal relationship, literally a conversational relationship between God and his creation. They were dwelling in the same abode. Well, right there in chapter 21, it says of revelation chapter 21, verse three, it says, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So, in a sense, absolutely it'll be like the Garden of Eden. In fact, if you go on and continue reading, you get into chapter 22, it talks about the Tree of Life. Yeah, I was going to say that would be the one yeah. that uh, I would say the similarity would yeah. be. Is it going to be equivalent to the Garden of Eden? Uh, yeah, we don't know if it's going to be equivalent, but there's so many beautiful things that happen in Revelation. In the beginning, you had him walking, God walking with alongside man. You had the tree of life and, and, and God dwelling there. And in here, in, and, and man was cursed and, and kicked out. In Revelation, the curse is taken away. The tree is reestablished. God is reestablished with his people. And, and it's just, it's such beautiful, it's a perfect bookend. 
to the Bible. Right. What it's going to look like? Well, the best description we have is this language of pearly gates and gold streets. Are they literally going to be gold streets? No. It's going to be better. It's going to be better. Right. I'm good with that. And and he are also mentioned in writing to the Church of Philadelphia, he, he mentions by name uh, the New Jerusalem. Uh, he that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven and, and from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So he refers to that as well, as, and, and he also in uh, chapter 21, verse 2, mentions that. And what you were saying about the delaying the coming, the idea of preparing a place, uh, I think that's exactly what Second Peter 3 is talking about because – He's talking about the scoffers that says, where's the sign of thy coming? And then he goes to, to verse 9, and he talks about, uh, you know, that God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but his long-suffering toward us. Right, like what he was saying. Willing, right, right, and I was thinking about that passage when you mentioned the, the idea of him delaying his coming, his duty is long-suffering. That's right. Give people time to repent right. and come to him. Right. So that was your your – Bible question there. Let me now give yeah. you just a, a quick theological answer mm -hmm. to the New Jerusalem question. What is the New Jerusalem? Well, if you're reading the book of Revelation, it is the opposite of Babylon. Exactly. See, in uh, chapter 17, uh, 17, 18 forward, you get into these figures, this figurative language, right. and Babylon represents oppression. It represents uh, the evil community. And basically, it's Satan's worshipers, people who are on Satan's side, his allies, the evil community. And what does Jerusalem represent? Well, Jerusalem has always represented the holy community, God's holy mm -hmm. people. It's where God dwells. Right. And so that's it's just, again, figurative language to show a contrast there. And that's what Becky right. Jones put. I don't think we can hardly comprehend. Amen. Amen. Uh, it, we know it is going to be wonderful. 